Hey guys, I'm Nazir and we are back in Wonder Draft for part 3 of the Fantasy Map Making series. So last session we looked at Chantitlan, the northeastern area. The session before we completed Avilfjord and Fjellheim. Today we're going to be looking at a few smaller areas to finish and polish off. Uh, rather than looking at one big area in isolation. And then what I want to try and get out of today's session as well is finalizing some of my country and region borders. Now, this is because, as I mentioned in one of my previous videos, this map is for a uh, a D&D campaign that I run with a group of friends. And this map is going to help them start to think about their uh, character backgrounds. So this is a campaign we're probably going to be starting in a few months' time. And what I'd like to do is at least get an early draft version of the map over to them. Uh, so they have plenty of time to start to think about character backgrounds and where they might want their characters to be from. The area I'm going to start with today is the area around what, what is the Duan Empire. So this area inspired by East Asia, that sort of mountain border and the Duan itself inspired by um, China predominantly. We're also going to focus on the conflagration which is that archipelago to the south the uh, sort of volcanic islands and then this mountainous region above the Duan which I see is being split into those three valleys which are pretty much already there based on that mountain layout with one valley uh, hidden sort of isolated maybe there's no easy way to get there on uh, on foot leading to this sort of isolated community Again, in terms of real-world inspiration, I see this area a little like uh, places like Tibet or Nepal. You've noticed already with some of my place names, specifically the, the Scandinavian ones which you'll see me place already, I'm just taking inspiration from real world languages, borrowing on words and phrases from them, uh, <laughs> with some help from Google Translate, obviously. Uh, and this is because I, as much as I enjoy world building, I have no interest in creating my own language from scratch, especially for something like a D&D game. Maybe it's something I'd explore in the future. But for the purposes of this, um, use what's already there. And there are so many real world languages to draw on to give you all so much variation in your world that um, there's no need to create something brand new from scratch. Right. video the Duan originally around about this area uh, the landmass connected off map but what I would like is a narrow sea route going from north to south here so I've just split that off opened it up to the ocean and we'll put some unlabeled unnamed islands to the east um, so there's future potential there for more world building should I ever wish to explore the map and expand out to the east further So now that I'm happy with this mountainous region, I'm going in with the colouring again, starting with the mountains. 
keep into that same grey that I've used elsewhere. And what I would like is for these valleys to signify the high altitude, even though we're not necessarily uh, particularly far north anymore. Just giving it a, uh, a snow coating as well. And of these three valleys, we can see now more distinctly that the mountains have started to be coloured in. Is that one on the left where I've got that placeholder label at the moment called Hidden Kingdom? That's the one I want to be a sort of isolationist society where, you know, trade, commodities, even people and ideas don't spread um, very easily from this area to the nearby regions. And I want it again to be a higher altitude than the two neighbouring valleys, hence why it's going to look... Uh, on the finish, at least have a more snowy look. You'll see me hopping around a little bit in this portion of the video, that's because I'm flicking back and forth to my law document that I'm starting to compile as I make the map. And as I go through that, I'm starting to get some ideas for uh, for place names, either for countries or for cities, and I'm just dropping those on the map as placeholders so uh, I don't forget them later on. There's this small connecting area between that valley civilization and Chantitlan we built in the last video. I'm just fleshing that area out a little bit with some more assets to make it look more complete. see me using that oak tree asset a lot more now, that lighter green tree, as we do move further south. Unlike in the previous two videos where we've really predominantly just focused on northern areas where I use that pine tree.
even though we're just as far south here as we were a moment ago where I was placing those oak trees, this valley, particularly that white one in the middle, uh, I'm going to stick to predominantly that pine tree asset again to give that um, impression of altitude. highest valley, this one that I've already started to shade in a little white, I'm going to use predominantly just the pine trees. starting to use the pathing tool to denote some of the region and country borders. So just a simple dotted black line for now. When the map is completely finished I may remove these. It's mainly just a point of reference so I can start to place some of these locations. Now for country borders they will usually follow some kind of a uh, natural barrier, so like a mountain range, an ocean, a wide river. But then again, you will have some that look somewhat artificial. Again, all you need to do is look at a real world map and look at some country or state borders to see examples of both of those. Now you will get some borders that don't necessarily follow natural boundaries, and that's usually where there's been some kind of war or conflict involved. So there will be a few of those that we'll see shortly that I'm going to place on the continent and that is where um, there have essentially been crusades and the crusading armies of stolen land from the locals and placed in these artificial uh, boundaries as they've conquered and taken over new land. The region of the conflagration, I see this as a chain of volcanic islands. I spend a bit of time here trying to get the the scaling right. I know I want there to be numerous small islands with a number of large islands where most people are settled, but I do change my mind a few times on quite that sort of density of islands to get the look right. In terms of culture of the people who live in this area, in the conflagration, I see it split predominantly into two still closely culturally and ethnically related, but two distinct societies. One society that live predominantly on the ocean, uh, that exist as traders, I see them living on these large sort of village-sized houseboat type structures that float through the seas from island to island, a somewhat nomadic lifestyle. And then you'd also have uh, people who've settled on the larger of the islands in the conflagration and live more of a traditional lifestyle. They'll farm, they'll herd animals, but again, they'll still be adept seafarers given the nature of the area. <laughs>
watch that pause there is where I've uh, been flicking back and forth to Google Translate and my law document to try and get some of these uh, names nailed down for this area. The language influence I've settled on for that uh, mountainous valley region is Nepalese. So that's the inspiration you see in there in those place names. Fictional, but based on the Nepalese language. tricky to sometimes get the look that you want on small islands because obviously you're limited by the size of the assets you have. So these islands and this area in general conflagration is one of my few examples of shrinking my mountains and hills down just to fit more nicely. Normally I like to keep everything to the same scale but the conflagration does need that level of detail. here with a few other assets that are just built into wonder trap so that palm tree for example but i i end up not going with it. it it looks a little too cartoony for my liking so i decide just to stick with the oak seem a little silly I do like to add at least where there is space where the island is large enough just a couple of little bits of grass uh, just to give it a bit of texture it looks very very plain otherwise especially when you've got so many islands in close proximity So now we're going back into that pathing tool to finish off drawing the borders for the continent. And you'll notice most of them will follow mountain ranges that are already there. somewhat an experimental process as I'm going through. I'm still starting to change my mind about certain things and shifting and moving some of the lines as I go.
and I'm just starting to refine the coastline of some of these areas of the continent, which are still just those sort of strange flat and curved lines from when I'd originally drawn the landmass in with the painting tool, so giving it some rough edges to make it look more natural. <laughs> place some seemingly arbitrary borders I can of course then go back and put some mountain ranges or wide rivers or waterways in to justify those borders retroactively where I need to. 